Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Missing Children of the Tudor Royal Family Inside of Westminster Abbey, there are six royal Tudor burials and there are a number which are rather well hidden. All of those children, to the notorious King Henry VIII, are buried inside of Westminster Abbey. Two of his daughters, Queen Bloody Mary I and Elizabeth I, lie interred in a rather large tomb in Henry VII's Lady Chapel, inside of a side vault. The tomb shows Elizabeth, and only a small reference is made to her sister Mary, who ruled before the Virgin Queen. Also, their half-brother, Edward VI, the direct successor of Henry VIII, is buried inside of the Lady Chapel, and the location of his grave is marked by a modern stone. However, sitting in the centre of the beautiful chapel are Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, the mother and father of the Tudor dynasty. Their tomb is magnificent, and close by, Henry VII's mother, Lady Margaret Beaufort, is buried in the abbey. Also, Buried in the elaborate abbey is Anne of Cleves, Henry VIII's fourth wife. Henry VIII himself is buried at Windsor Castle, along with his third wife, Jane Seymour. But there are a number of mysteries of the Tudor period, and in particular, there are at least four Tudor children who have vanished from seemingly the face of the earth. Their burial locations are not known, and it's not entirely clear what happened to them after their death. Elizabeth of York, who died six years before Henry VII, her husband, died inside the Tower of London on the 11th of February 1503 on her birthday. She died as a result of complications from childbirth and was then buried in the new Henry VII Lady Chapel, which was being built. Elizabeth had a huge funeral, but it's believed that her death came around as she tried to conceive another child whilst grieving for her eldest son. Arthur Tudor had died in Ludlow Castle in 1502, and a month after the death of the boy, who should have become king, she fell pregnant and claimed she was young enough to have more children. But Elizabeth did give birth on the 2nd of February 1502 to a daughter who was named Princess Catherine, after Arthur's wife and Henry VIII's future first wife, Catherine of Aragon. But eight days later, Princess Catherine died, as did her mother a day after. Princess Catherine, the daughter of Elizabeth of York, is one of those Tudor children who did disappear, as it was documented that she was buried and interred inside of Westminster Abbey. But the location of her remains and tomb today is a mystery still. Elizabeth of York did have a number of surviving children, including the future Henry VIII, Princess Margaret Tudor, who became the Queen of Scotland, and Princess Mary Tudor, the future wife of King Louis XII of France. But there were other children who did not survive infancy. Giving birth during the Tudor period was very risky for mother and child, and with each pregnancy that did not go to plan, there was much grief and upset for Elizabeth of York and Henry VII. They greatly loved their children, and hoped that their children would secure more alliances with other nations following the Tudors' seizure of the throne following the Battle of Bosworth Field and the end of the Wars of the Roses. Henry VII's infant daughter, Princess Elizabeth Tudor, was set to marry the future Francis I of France. Discussions had took place whilst she was very young, and a marriage with, would link the two countries which for centuries had been at war in conflicts such as the One Hundred Years' War. But Princess Elizabeth Tudor, at the age of three, died at Eltham Palace. Her parents were away at the Palace of Sheen whilst she died, and it's likely that Princess Elizabeth died from a short but sharp illness that was initially not considered to have been the most serious. As Elizabeth of York and Henry VII were not summoned to the palace, it's likely that the royal maids and governess thought that she would simply recover. But this was not the case, and Princess Elizabeth died when Elizabeth of York was already in the fourth month of pregnancy, which would be another daughter, Princess Mary, the future Queen of France. Princess Elizabeth was transferred in a black chariot of six horses to Westminster, and her cortege was placed in, the, in a choir which was covered with black cloth, fringes with red and white roses, and the words in gold, Jesus, West, Amor, Moose. 
and an inscription placed at the feet of her funeral effigy read, Death snatched her away. The royal family spent £318 on her funeral, which was a huge amount considering Henry VII had a reputation for being tight. The king and queen did not attend the funeral, which was tradition, and Princess Elizabeth's tomb consisted of a small grey marble chest with black marble slab on top. Her effigy has been lost to time, but her parents created her tomb, and it was believed to have been to the right of the altar and in front of the great shrine of St Edward the Confessor inside of Westminster Abbey. However, the inscription has now worn away, dedicated to her, and the tomb was so small that it could easily have been overlooked, and today is lost to time. Thomas More wrote a tribute to the young Princess Elizabeth, stating, Adieu, sweetheart, my little daughter late, thou shall, sweet babe, such is thy destiny. Thy mother never know, for here I lie, at Westminster that costly work of yours, mine own dear Lord, I shall never see. But Elizabeth is a forgotten Tudor child, whose resting place remains lost to history, but there are more Tudor children lost to time. Elizabeth of York's baby son, Prince Edmund, who lived around a year, was also buried at Westminster Abbey, but non-memorial exists to him and also Princess Catherine, who was mentioned earlier. Also interred in the Abbey is Mary, Queen of Scots, and inside of her vault are a number of her descendants, along with a number of children of the Stuart dynasty, the royal family that followed the House of Tudor on the throne. But there was another child who caused huge amounts of joy when they were born, whose burial location has been lost. If this child would have lived, it's likely that Henry VIII would have seen it not necessary to marry another woman and cause a huge amount of change in English history. It was a male heir that Henry VIII greatly wanted to continue the Tudor dynasty and his family's line. He hoped the Tudors would stay on the throne for centuries to come. Henry, the Duke of Cornwall, the eldest son of Henry VIII and his first Queen Catherine of Aragon, was born at Richmond Palace in 1511. The country celebrated greatly the birth of the new prince, and there was a huge pageant and tournament held in Westminster, and church bells echoed throughout the land. The baby prince died on the 22nd of February, and he was then buried at night in Westminster Abbey, being only around 52 days old. His burial was attended by ten children of the Chapel Royal, and huge lengths of black cloth were ordered. Henry VIII spent a large amount of money on the funeral for his son, and with this mourned the heir to the throne. But when Catherine of Aragon gave birth to their daughter Mary I, Henry would proclaim, By the grace of God, boys will follow, we are both still young, showing his disappointment that he did not have a son. The location of the burial of Henry the Duke of Cornwall, the baby boy whose birth was celebrated greatly across the country, is believed to have been on the north side of the sanctuary, close to the entrance of the chapel of St Edward the Confessor, near the tombs of Princess Elizabeth Tudor and also Anne of Cleves, Henry VIII's fourth wife. When work was occurring at Westminster Abbey in the 1860s, George Gilbert Scott, an architect, oversaw the discovery of a small lead casket of a child, discovered near to one of the steps near the high altar. It was not disturbed, and there were no memorial, and with this it was believed that it could have been the coffin belonging to one of the lost Tudor children. As mentioned, there are many mysteries of the Tudor dynasty, and one of them is the resting place of the lost Tudor children. Each one of these children would have been princes and princesses, and some could have been rulers of England or foreign lands through marriages to important dynasties. There were great hopes for these children, however ultimately a tragic end marred this. The surviving children of the Tudor dynasty became some of the most notorious, feared and brilliant rulers that England ever had. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.